And with that, the 2022 season comes to an end. Good night. It was always a hard decision to decide what type of travel bag I should choose for the bike. The reason why I chose an Evoque bag is because it's not hard framed. And even though the hard framed bags offers more protection to the bike itself, they are very bulky, they are very huge, and well, I don't have that much of a luxury to store that item uh, during non-travel time. So this bag neatly packs down into a significantly smaller size. It's being done by those parts on the front and the back of the bag. At first times, it will be quite uh, complicated to install those, but after a few tries, probably gets used to that uh, item inside and it will be a lot easier to put those in. So those at the front and the back are in order to maintain the size of the back, even though we might look very small and potentially not very strong. Trust me, it kind of stays in shape real well. Side note, subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. You can see that I'm a bit struggling to insert this part, but uh, it's just a matter of time to add it. The frame fits into the external uh, pad, which is very helpful. It has a lot of uh, different axle options as well as uh, different length for the wheelbase. So you can add the bike, which is somewhat around uh, 130 centimeters in the wheelbase. It depends on the frame a bit as well, but just a rule of thumb, the Scott Spark model fits this bag and there is still a bit of room left. This bag is a pro large version. That means it's a bit uh, bigger than a casual one. I just chosen this in order to make sure that the Spark fits. And it was a good decision because you can see that it allows to control the different uh, distance between the wheelbase. So the wheels itself are being added to the side pockets and those side pockets has also a bit of a protection for the discs as well as you install those tubes on the side in order to add additional protection to the wheels. It's very straightforward thing. Currently the bike is with 2.3 tires and it fits. Um, I believe that you could potentially add up to 2.4, but uh, 2.4 might be the maximum you could get out of it. So here how things work. You remove the front wheel, install the adapter into the, one of the holes, and then you just screw the axle inside the fork as normal. Kind of the same thing applies to the rear wheel as well, where different type of adapters are included for the rear. You make sure it sticks between those sides and that's kind of it. I don't remove the chain, probably no one does. What I do is I remove it from the chain ring and then later down the road you will see that I'm using some paper just to make sure it doesn't scratch the frame. Yeah, one of the most tedious things is to remove the pedals and you always forgot which direction to turn those off. But the rule of thumb is that the non-drive side goes in the opposite direction by normal and the drive side goes in casual direction. So depending from which area you are looking at the bike, that either you are looking from the outside or the inside, the direction differs. So I'm not going to get into this too much, but uh, make sure that you remember this and it will save you a bit of a time every time you're trying to do that. Next thing, we need to remove the handlebars uh, from the fork. That's one of the downfalls of the spark. I just add the cover uh, to the fork in order not to miss it, as well as in order to protect uh, the fork from coming out uh, from the frame. This is the handlebars uh, cover. It attaches to the frame and then you just uh, do something with the handlebars. The bad thing about integrated headset is if you make sure the length of the cables are just perfectly cut to the distance you need in order for it to look neat, you might have uh, situations like this where it's just a bit too short to make the proper angle of handlebars. So for that reason, then fitting this uh, handlebars in the pro bag I have to remove one of the handle. It's not a big deal, but uh, something to do all the time. Technically, I could fit it with the lever on the handlebars, but in order to avoid squeezing it inside the bag, 
I just removed it. In order to add the bike to the back, I strongly recommend you to make sure all those uh, straps are properly uh, unbended, so that way once you add the bike into the frame, you don't need to figure out where's everything and how to connect those pieces. So that's just an advice in order to simplify your life. The bike was connected to the frame which will go into the bag itself. If you don't have a dropper, then you will most likely have to put down uh, the seat as well a bit. But if you are relatively short, you can try to uh, attach the bike on the bottom frame as low as possible to the extent where it doesn't uh, touch the railer at the bottom, etc. But that way, maybe you could fit it without touching the uh, seat post. In my case, it's with a dropper, and because I added the bike on one of the lowest parts at the end of the frame, it enabled me to keep the seat post in place. We have quite a few mounting points where the frame attaches to the back. If you make sure everything is tidy before adding frame uh, to the back, it will be a very simple process. So just a few parts at the bottom, um, connecting the seat post area and then the fork and a bit of uh, frame parts at the front. I would also recommend you to use some tape to make sure the cranks doesn't move. Side note, don't forget your pedals as well as the wrench which you use to unscrew them. Thank me later. No, I haven't forgot it yet. I can see it coming. Once the bike is in place, we need to add the wheels into side pockets. One thing to point out is that some airlines uh, requires you to go with as low air pressure as possible in the tires for safety reasons. I just make sure that the tires are with a bit less pressure than it should be, but with that in mind, just make sure you have an option to inflate the tires once you come to the location. The compartments for uh, wheels are very neat and they serve the purpose perfectly, leaving quite a lot of space in the back area for your other apparel, uh, like shoes, helmet, etc. So I always add those into the bike uh, compartment as well. So the bike itself lasted quite a few uh, travels already and I'm very excited having it. One other good advantage is that it has transportation wheel to be placed at front, so in the airport you don't need to carry everything on your own, you just install that wheel and you are good to go. It's a very neat way to travel with this bike bag and I couldn't recommend it more to use it. If you like this type of content, do not hesitate to subscribe to this channel and we will meet again real soon here. Until next time.